Welcome to the Optics Renaissance. I am not exaggerating when I say that right now is probably the best time in the history of the world to be able to go out and find a scope for your rifle or your handgun. Basically, you can take whatever your individual needs are, your individual gun, go out to any of the major manufacturers, and you're not just going to find a scope that works perfectly well for what you need to get done, but you can probably pick your price point as well and maybe scale back features or scale them up if you want. And one of the companies that has been leading the charge in all this recently is Bushnell. Not only have they swapped out some of their older models, they've just gone ahead and thrown out everything and they have come up with a bunch of new lines all at the same time. Last year we took a look at the Bushnell Engage which was just an amazing little scope. Very, very clear glass, excellent resolution edge to edge, great color reproduction at a just a fantastic uh, cost. It is very affordable for people that want to be able to shoot long range or, you know, kind of intermediate range. Great little scope. But now they've gone and they've added these three whole new tiers, and we're going to be taking a look at some individual models right through here. I'm Kyle Broderick. Welcome to the Social Regressive. We have all kinds of awesome scope reviews coming up here in the future. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. And actually, when it comes to these three that we have here on the table, we're going to be doing some long-term reviews on these. You're probably going to see some uh, field footage. There might be some hunting. All kinds of great stuff coming up. So what we have here on the table, we have the Bushnell Prime, which is going to be their new kind of budget uh, scope down there. We have the Bushnell Nitro, which is going to be a great mid-tier. Maybe just, a, it's gonna be definitely higher than your Engage. Uh, the glass on this is every bit as excellent as it was on the Engage, but this is gonna add some extra uh, things on here, including FFP. And then back here, we have the Bushnell Forge, which is going to provide, uh, it's gonna take a lot of those elite tactical uh, sort of uh, glass and other goodies, uh, like some of the reticles and things, and it's going to make it more of a hunting style scope, a little lighter, a little smaller, and uh, a little bit lower in price as well. So we're gonna take a look at all three of these today and just kind of describe what's going on at Bushnell right now and how you might want to look at these three scopes. Again, we are going to be taking a close look at each of these over time, but we're just gonna break this down and show you what's going on at Bushnell right now. Let's start at the top end with the Forge. A lot of you are going to recognize the rifle that it's attached to. This is the Savage Axis Project Rifle that we worked on for so long. It's a 7mm 08 rifle and this has connected in a 30 mile an hour crosswind at 1,450 plus yards. Uh, this is a heck of a rifle and I think it's going to work out really well, especially with this scope attached to it. So what this is, imagine taking one of the Elite Tactical Rifles or rifle scopes, like the HDMR2 or the XRS2 that we've taken a look at in the past and just loved. And then you can scale some things back just a little bit. This has a lot of the technology from there and it has a very similar reticle. What's in here right now, this is the Deploy Milliradian FFP reticle inside here. And this has a lot of data in there. This is the kind of reticle that I just love for hunting, for target shooting, for everything. I'm a big fan of getting lots of data in a reticle. Some of you may not like this quite so much and they do have some other options. You can get second focal plane, first focal plane, MOA, Miller and they have really pulled out the stops on this scope. This is just flatly amazing. Before we delve into the awesome features of this scope, I just wanted to go over some of its basic stats. This is a 30 millimeter tube, not a 34 like you're gonna get on the HDMR2 and the XRS2. This is going to lead to uh, not all that much elevation and windage adjustment. I'll put the, uh, the stats here on the screen. Uh, but out here we do have a 50 millimeter objective with an excellent lens in here. This collects a whole lot of light past dusk. This is going to do a great job for you hunters especially. This is designed to be a hunting scope and one that can be taken out into the real world and kind of beat around. This is going to be able to take a hit, I think. I'm expecting that this tube is gonna be a little bit thicker than usual. Again, you know, we do have not much uh, elevation and windage adjustment and I think part of that is gonna come down to extra thickness they put in this tube. Some of it's also going to come down to larger lenses, I imagine. 
uh, because this, the image through here is just beautiful, but I'm getting ahead of, ahead of myself. 50 millimeter objective, and then the zoom ratio on here is 6x, which I think is just perfect. Since this is a first focal plane scope in this case, 6x is just about right. If you start getting up into 8x and 10x, you get into some of these where the reticle is too small when you're zoomed all the way out, and when you're zoomed in, it's really thick, fat, you can't actually see your target on the other side. It's just a, a huge occlusion inside your scope. 6X I think is just perfect, and especially coupled with this particular reticle. However they have these lenses set up, the exit pupil is simply gigantic. We're talking about a four inch eye relief on this scope, which is about, about another half inch longer than just about any other scope that I've ever dealt with. I'm used to having to mount the scopes on the furthest rear uh, rail right here, and you can see that I actually have it pushed forward one just so I can get enough distance. This is going to be one that's very easy to get behind, even on its maximum magnification, 27X, getting behind this scope is incredibly easy. As you might expect from a scope with a price tag of 950 bucks, this does have side focus, and like everything else on this scope, this dial just feels wonderful. It's just perfectly smooth, no hitches. Everything on here seems to be very precisely machined. And if we take a look at the turrets right here, I mean, there are no chatter marks. There's, everything is just nicely radiused. Everything is very, very well built. The turrets that you see right here, let's go ahead and start checking out some of the features. These are locking, like the, uh, some of the, uh, the turrets that we checked out before, like on the uh, Engage. You lift this up to unlock it, and these are actually graduated. These will spin up and down based on how you've turned these. So you lift it up to turn, and when you press it down, it is locked. Now this does have uh, kind of the, uh, the three little screws that you turn to remove the cap and be able to reset your zero. And on the underside of this, there is a zero stop. This is just like the one that you get on the Elite Tactical Scopes. It's a plate that you unscrew, drop down, and then you, you set your exact zero once you have this sighted in. The windage knob, as well, is one of the locking turrets, so you can pull this to unlock it and then press back in to lock. And you can probably hear, I'm gonna turn the microphone just a little bit so you can hear a bit better, but this is what the turrets sound like. Very tactile, very precise. There's almost no float going on in here when I uh, spin it up. And it has a nice loud click to it. This is premium. Uh, they've definitely gone to some, some lengths to make sure that this feels and sounds just right. This is gonna be one where you're not going to be accidentally drifting over your exact spot that you need to hit on your turrets. Some of you guys like to spin your turrets in the field. Some of you guys like to use the reticle. Depending on the situation, I'll use both. But for a dynamic environment, I want one of these really complex reticles that allows me to deal with maybe a running target so I can put lead on it. I can do, deal with windage right away. I can deal with drop and I can do it without having to actually touch the turrets at all. So if I'm dealing with targets at different distances, I can very quickly jump from one to the next without having to actually mess with anything on the scope, take my eye out of the scope, anything like that. And this reticle is going to get the job done in a big way. The Horus H59 is probably still my favorite reticle of all time, and this takes basically that same formula and just kind of tweaks it a little bit. This is going to be excellent out in the field. I put together a video where I showed how I used the Horus H59 to shoot a running hog at 400 yards, and it was just kind of a, a pop-up target. And uh, this is gonna be one that's going to work essentially the same way. I'm a big, big fan, and I can't wait to see how this does out in the field. The image through this scope is better than I can describe. It's, it really seems to be every bit as good as through the elite tactical models and I'm not exaggerating. I'm looking forward to testing this side by side with those. This has no tunneling. It has just a gigantic image, easy to get behind. You get full resolution, edge to edge, color, contrast, resolution. It is there in spades, and you're gonna be able to see lots of mirage through this. I'm really looking forward to testing. Putting it all together, what is this scope designed for? 
This is a hard use scope. This is one that you will take out in the field and do some real work with. If you are a hunter in the Rockies or out in the plains where you need that extra magnification, you need to be able to take longer shots and be able to deal with wind, with moving targets and all of that, this is your scope. This is going to do all kinds of great work for you. And that goes not just for the features, but for how this is built as well. This is IPX7 waterproof. It's supposed to be able to handle being three feet underwater for about 30 minutes or so without anything getting on the inside. It's O-ring sealed. And this has some really neat tricks on the lenses. This is called the Exo Barrier. Its exterior lenses have a, a coating on them that I was able to test out on the, uh, the Bushnell Engage. It's going to prevent anything from really happening to the lens. It's going to resist dust, scratches, smudges. Uh, sometimes some of the older scopes, if you just got a fingerprint on there and left it for too long, it would kind of etch the scope. It would, it would stay there forever. But this repels basically everything. From what I've heard, you know, tree sap, whatever, it will not stick to these lenses permanently and it won't damage it. Let's see what's in the box. First off, you do get a scope cover. This is uh, kind of a, a padded sort of thick material, so this should help keep your scope a little extra safe during transportation. You do get this lens cleaning cloth, a microfiber cloth with a uh, little clip on the end. That's kind of nice. You get this universal tool for adjusting not just your your scope itself and some of the, the turrets and things on there, but you can actually use this to uh, crank the torque back onto your uh, scope rings. This is going to be your standard scope ring nut size right there. Pretty cool little thing right here. Okay, so you get a sunshade, very lightweight, and it screws on very nicely. And then we have uh, these Butler Creek style flip caps right here. So this has the, uh, the push button on the rear one and then you just kind of push forward on the front. I think these are made by Butler Creek and they fit very tightly. These aren't ones you have to worry about them falling off in the field. So what does this rifle scope actually give up when compared to the elite tactical models like the HDMR2? Well, first off, you do get the smaller tube, so you're gonna get less adjustment range. 14 and a half milliradians up, down, left, right, instead of the 30 that you're gonna be getting with the HDMR2. And some of the lenses may have some different sizes in here. I don't know if that'll make an actual difference we're gonna see in the field, but some of the other things that you're gonna give up is going to be the option of illuminated reticle and some of the more bizarre reticles like the H59. Now this is very similar to that, so you're really not losing a lot, but if you did want the, uh, the Tremor 3 or the, uh, the H59, those reticles are not available in here. The Elite Tactical models do have that ED Prime glass, which is going to be higher density, and it should lead to re greater resolution as well. Now we're taking a big step down in price, but the quality is not dropping much at all. This is the Nitro, and this model that you see right here, the 3 to 12 FFP with the deploy milliradian reticle, this is actually selling on Midway right now for about 375 bucks. They have it on sale. Hopefully when you go, they still have that sale going on because that price is insane for what you get on this. This still has that 30 millimeter tube, this one has a 44 millimeter objective. That's what most of them are gonna have in this line. Uh, there is a 50 millimeter on the six to 24, I believe. Go check out the stats. And then back here, the zoom ratio that you're gonna get on this steps back a little bit from that 6X. This is a 4X on all of these models. So this one is a three to 12. There's the 12X down to three. This spins very neatly and nicely, and this really does continue all the awesomeness that we saw with the Forge, where everything seems to be very well polished. Uh, it just seems to be built extremely well overall, very well machined. This feels like a very solid scope, even though it doesn't actually weigh all that much. This is you know, a little bit more than some of the average hunting scopes, but uh, really not bad at all, especially for a 30 millimeter tube. Like the Forge, this does have side focus, and this feels every bit as smooth. And you can see that this one will actually parallax adjust down to 10 yards. So if you're looking for a scope that you can put on a rimfire as well, this might be an excellent choice. Some of the differences that we're gonna get into, take a look at these turrets. These are not exposed target style turrets. These are more slimline capped turrets. These are, this whole scope overall is still IPX7 waterproof. 
but this one is set up just a little bit differently. Uh, these are not graduated turrets, so these are not ones that you're probably going to be really spinning in the field, especially when you take a look at the reticle that we have in here. Uh, you can spin these up. These do have a, a really neat zero reset. If if you saw the, uh, the engage video that I did a while back, uh, it had a special top right here on this turret. All you have to do is unscrew this cap right here, and then you can just lift the turret up, put it back on its zero once you get it zeroed, and then lock it back down and this is good to go. But yeah, you can spin this. It doesn't have any other kind of locks going on, but the clicks themselves are very palpable, audible, and this is going to work out uh, really well. This is one quarter MOA. This is an FFP model as well, but this one uses their MOA deploy reticle. So this is a lot like that H59 again, and like the, the reticle that we saw in the Forge, except that this one is going to be um, uh, MOA based instead. And a lot of you guys may prefer that. If you are you know, someone that has grown up in the Imperial system for a good long while, if that's what you use, uh, then this is going to be what you like best. If you're used to measuring things in inches, this is going to be probably the best choice. The nitro line is quite large and you have lots of options to choose from. If you prefer Miller Radians versus MOA, if you like SFP, FFP, you can pick what you want and there's gonna be a, probably a rifle scope in there. Lots of different options. Much like the Forge, you do get the uh, exo barrier on the exterior lenses that's going to keep anything from sticking. And then you do have the ultra wide band coating on these lenses as well. So whatever awesomeness in the image that you got with the Forge, you're gonna get a lot of it right here. And so far in my testing, resolution edge to edge is just phenomenal. Whatever resolution it has in the center, it does not give up even right up to the very edge. This is one that's going to work very well in hunting situations, especially where you have maybe herd animals and you need to be able to make multiple shots and be able to see things on the periphery. This is going to get the job done when it comes to reading wind as well. And this is another one that I just can't wait to see what it can do in the field. The rifle that it's attached to is a Ruger American. And this has a Boyd's At One stock attached to it. And it's in target configuration right now. Make sure you check out the review that I've done on the Boyd's At One. Uh, because this stock is a great upgrade for a lot of you guys that have some of these, especially more budget end rifles. Now let's check out the goodies that come in the box. Now first off, it is going to show you the some of the reticles that you can get. Here's the Deploy SFP, Deploy MOA FFP, Deploy Mill FFP, and then they do have a Multi-X as well if you want a traditional hunting style reticle. Uh, some of the other goodies that uh, come in the box. Okay, we have a sunshade that's already attached on here. This is just like that Forge one. And we do get the, uh, the little lens cleaning cloth. And then we have the Butler Creek style caps as well. So they are including a lot of value for money in here. This scope costs 375 bucks on Midway right now. You really need to go buy it. So what do you give up when you go from the Forge down to the Nitro? Not all that much. You do get the 4X zoom ratio instead of the 6X, and you do lose the graduated turrets, uh, the kind of target style turrets, and you get these kind of low profile covered ones instead, and you do get a smaller objective, but that's about it. We reduced the tube diameter, the objective size, and the price considerably, and now we are looking at the Bushnell Prime. Specifically, this is the 1 to 4 model, 1 to 4 by 32 millimeter. This little guy is still very well built, very well machined. I think it uses a lot of the same parts that you're going to see on some of the others, like the way that these caps on here are machined. Uh, they still feel just wonderful, but it's going to remove some of the extra goodies that we got on the other ones in order to get down to this price. So like I mentioned, this is a one inch tube. This is a 32 millimeter objective right here. And then under these turret caps, instead of uh, the, the graduated turret, uh, turrets that we had before, or ones that we could you know, kind of lock down and all that, this right here is a very simple MOA turret right here. It still has those wonderful, solid, palpable, and audible clicks, 
It still has all that quality going through there. It still has all the parts that feel really nice and very well machined. And yes, you can actually remove this, uh, this screw right here and then uh, replace this if you want to set your zero. But overall, this is a scope that you're not going to be playing with the turrets at all. And you're really not gonna be uh, adapting to much of the environment either as far as the reticle goes. This is kind of a lock and leave gun and it has a very simple reticle. This is the Multi X, which is going to be kind of your simple crosshair reticle with the thicker posts on the outside. So you can still use it to make some measurements if you need to, you can still use it for windage. But uh, overall, this is going to be a simpler a device and it's going to be one that's going to work very well in kind of traditional short range hunting. This right here, as you can see, is not a 223 AR-15. This is 458 SOCOM. And so far, my buddy Cole that owns this rifle and uh, he's been testing this scope out on top of it, he has just been thumping on this and yeah, nothing is happening. A lot of time, what you would see in the past with some of these uh, second focal plane reticles, some of the less expensive hunting scopes, the crosshair, the reticle would actually come out. It's sitting right under here somewhere. A lot of time it would bump out either from the rearward recoil or from the sudden forward recoil that you get from an AR-15 buffer slamming back home. This little thing is built to take a beating. This is one that you're gonna be able to take out in the field, give it a licking, and it's still gonna keep ticking. The mount that you see here is a Weaver 1-inch SPR thumb nut mount. It's actually very inexpensive if you go out on Amazon. I'll put a link to it down in the bottom. This runs about 40 bucks, I think, right now. A uh, great little piece, and this should hold it very steadily. Uh, if you want, you can actually just turn down these thumb nuts in order to attach it, but since this is a 458 SOCOM, now we're gonna torque this down to 40 inch-pounds. To help this scope survive difficult outdoor work, this does have the exo barrier on all of its external lenses. And I'm really happy that they did that. To have a $130 scope that can not only take a pounding and be able to reliably track with the turrets up here, but to also have such debris resistance and all kinds of weather resistance is awesome. Uh, it's also water resistant. This has that same IPX7 waterproof rating. So this is going to be able to be dropped in water or taken out in rain, and it shouldn't have any difficulties overcoming those situations. I mentioned that this is a 1 to 4x scope, and you might think that this has a 4x zoom ratio on all these models, but that's not the case. Uh, this one is kind of the oddball. Most of these are going to be the standard 3x zoom ratio, so you're going to have your 3 to 9, 6 to 18, 4 to 12, uh, those sorts of magnifications. And then those reticles sitting back here in the second focal plane are all going to be very simple, but there are some variances as you kind of step around within this range. Uh, there is going to be one model that has side focus. That's going to be one of the higher end ones. There's going to be a higher magnification one that is going to save you a little bit on price that has an adjustable objective out here instead. And then there are going to be some models that have larger objectives, of course. There's gonna be a, a three to nine by 40. That's kind of your standard hunting size scope. This one has a little 32 millimeter objective. And then there should be one that has a 50 millimeter objective as well. Aside from tube diameter, zoom ratio, and some of the other features that we mentioned, what are some of the things that you might miss going for this instead of the forge? Well, probably one of the biggest ones that I've noticed is its resolution overall. This still does have a wonderful image for its price point. I can't really think of anything that compares to it. Uh, it looks very good. It has lots of contrast, lots of color reproduction. It all looks excellent, but it does kind of fall off toward the edges. So you do have a certain amount of resolution toward the center of the image, but then once you get about 80% of the way out, you do start to lose that at the edges. Some people won't notice, they're gonna be concentrating more toward the inside, but then if you do have you know, maybe a herd of pigs or you know, something that we, you need to be keeping watch on the edges, you might be losing a little bit of that prettiness. Overall, I am floored by the quality of the image in this scope, especially when you consider its price point. Go on over to Bushnell.com and check out their catalog. It is huge and it seems to be growing by the day. 
These three models that we've taken a look at here today, this is only just scratching the surface. No matter what kind of shooting you plan to be doing, Bushnell is probably going to have a model that's going to meet your need, and you can probably pick from those price tiers as well. Thanks a bunch to patrons of the Destructive Arts for continuing to keep the lights on, keep these videos coming. If anybody else wants to chip in a buck or two a month to keep videos like these coming out, uh, I'm going to put a link to Patreon down in the description or in the sidebar. And thanks a lot to Sportsman's Guide at the 338 Lapua Magnum level, Peter at the 300 Win Mag level, and thank you to Bushnell for sending over these scopes for me to check out. We have a lot more videos coming. Make sure that you like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, because we are going to get in depth with these and see what they can really do. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.